I'm not sure. I'm afraid we need to use math. This is Geometry at Bangor Christian Schools, Lesson 1.5. We're going to talk about using formulas in geometry. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for your kindness and your mercy. I thank you that you're consistent. You're a person. Uh, you're not a computer, but in many ways, because of the precious promises that you've made, if we take you at your word, even though you're a person, you will respond very consistently, more consistently than a computer. And so in many ways, even though you are not a computer, you respond consistently. And so your promises can in some ways be treated like formulas, but let us see them beyond more than just something that we can do, but something we can trust in. As a matter of fact, because it's your word, we can trust in it. Now, I thank you for the students you've given me, whoever they are, wherever they are today. I pray for their blessing. Please help me to be a blessing to them so that they can learn in this lesson. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to go to page 38 in the textbook, and we're going to do numbers 1 through 9 on the board today. So open up your textbooks to page 38. And then let's do number one. Explain how the concepts of perimeter and circumference are related. How are they related? So to get full points for this kind of a question, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a college response. I'm looking for more than circumference is round, rectangle is squarish. Circumference is distance around, perimeter is distance around. I like something that's more of a college answer, okay? So for example, I think the best thing to do rather than for me to write it all out is to just give you a verbal example. The perimeter and the circumference are related. It's a great way to start the sentence. The perimeter and the circumference are related in that they both measure the distance around an object. So the perimeter is the distance around either a rectangle or a square or even a triangle and many other kind of figures. But what makes them different? Well, the circumference is still a measure around, but it's around a circular figure, a circle. And so begin your sentence with what you're trying to say. Begin your sentence with, the perimeter and circumference are related in this way. Begin the sentence that way, okay? For a rectangle, length and width are sometimes used in place of, we have a choice to make. Is it base and height or radius and diameter? Which one of those is the replacement? Well, what does radius and diameter have to do with? Those have to do with circles. So, since this is a rectangle, the answer is base and height. Sometimes we replace length and width with base and height. Find the perimeter and area of each figure. Here we have a rectangle that's 44, or not 40, but 4 millimeters by 11 millimeters. So the perimeter formula, capital P, is 2 times the length, 11 millimeters, plus the width, 4. So 11 plus 4 is 15, and 2 times 15 is 30. So the perimeter of this particular figure is 30 millimeters. The area of this rectangle is 11 millimeters times 4 millimeters. Now, we know that's 44, but the units are going to be millimeters squared. So 44 millimeters squared. <clears throat> Number four, what shape do we have? We have a square. So all sides are the same, and we have four of them. So the perimeter 
is 4 times y minus 3 inches, which is the same thing as 4y minus 12 inches. So I'm going to multiply that 4. The area of a square is the square of its side length. So the side length is y minus 3. So y minus 3 squared inches squared. Now I have to go back to my algebra. And I've got to use foil, first, outer, inner, last. I'm going to try to do that up here so that I can at least show you the process here if you've forgotten it. Y times Y would be the F part of FOIL. So that would be Y squared. Y times negative 3 would be the O part of FOIL. So that would be negative 3Y. Negative 3 times Y would be the I part of FOIL. So that would be negative 3Y. And negative 3 times negative 3 would be the L part of FOIL. And then I combine those two terms together because they're like terms. Negative 3y minus 3y is negative 6y. So the final answer here is y squared minus 6y plus 9 inches squared. And so that's the area of the figure. Number 5 is a triangle. So the perimeter is the sum of the sides. So here we have 5 inches plus 13 inches plus x inches, plus 3 inches. Let's combine that together. 5 plus 13 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. Final answer, 21 plus x inches. Area is base times height divided by 2. So capital A equals the base. Now look at that. What is the base? It's not 3x because that would be 3 times x. It's 3 plus x. So the base is x plus 3 or 3 plus x times the height which is 4 divided by 2. Now 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that gives me x plus 3 <clears throat> times 2 inches squared. And now I'm going to distribute that 2. So 2x plus 6 inches squared is the area. All right, let's move on to a manufacturing problem. A puzzle contains a triangular piece with a base of 3 inches and a height of 4 inches. A manufacturer wants to make 80 puzzles. Find the amount of wood used if it takes 20 pieces to make just one puzzle. I've underlined the word amount because they don't explicitly use the word area, but they imply the word area when they say find the amount of wood. So this is an area problem. What shape are we dealing with? Go back to the problem. The pieces are triangular. So now I know I want an area because I want the amount of wood, and I know the shape because the pieces are triangular. So really all I need to do first is find the area of one piece, and after that it's all going to be multiplication. So the area formula for our triangle is base times height divided by 2 which, by the way, sometimes you can also write it like this. Well, not sometimes, every time. One half base height. I know the base is 3 and the height is 4. So the area is equal to 1 half 3 inches times 4 inches. Remember, the units are going to be inches squared. 3 times 4 gives me 12. And half of 12 is 6. So the area of one piece is 6 inches squared. Now the manufacturer wants to make how many puzzles? 80 puzzles. 
But how many pieces does it take to make one puzzle? 20. So this is going to be a multiplication problem. The total area, what I'm going to do is put a capital T down here for total, is equal to 6 inches squared for one piece times 20 for one puzzle times 80 for 80 puzzles. And so I should have done this ahead of time, but let's see if I can do this in my head. Uh, 6 times 20 is equal to 120. And 120 times 80. So I hope I'm doing this right. And final answer, 9,600 inches squared is the total area. Just one more time. 80 plus 12, uh, 80 plus 16 is 96. Yes, 9,600 inches squared. Find the circumference and area of each circle. Leave your answers in terms of pi and also round to the nearest hundredth. Let's get our calculator. Radius is 2.1 meters. So the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times radius. So that's 4.2 pi meters. Now that's in terms of pi, which means I leave the pi in the answer. Then I do 4.2 <clears throat> times pi. I went to the nearest hundredth, and that's two decimal places. So the hundredth place is a nine, and the thousandth place is a four. The four isn't enough to round up the nine. So this is going to be approximately 13.19 meters. That's the circumference. Area is equal to pi radius squared. Now 2.1 squared is 4.41. So the area is 4.41 pi meters squared. Now I multiply that by pi. The hundredth place will turn out to be a five. And so the approximation here that we're going to use is 13.85 meters squared. And that's the first circle. The second circle has a diameter of seven inches. So remember, circumference is two times pi times radius. But since 2 times the radius is also the diameter, I can write the circumference as pi times diameter. So circumference in this case is 7 pi inches. 7 times pi is approximately 21.99 inches. Time for the area. Area is pi r squared. Well, now I have to take 7 cut in half, which is 3.5. Now, 3.5 squared is 12.25. So the area in terms of pi is 12.25 pi, which is squared. Now let's take our 12.25 and multiply by pi. Now this time, nope, to the nearest hundredth, it's going to be 38.48. So this is 38.48 inches squared. Okay, we're ready for the last one. We have the diameter, 16 centimeters. I'm going to use pi times diameter. So the circumference is 16 pi centimeters. That was easy. 16 times pi. The thousandth place is enough to round up the hundredths in this case. So the circumference is approximately 50.27 centimeters. All right, let's finish this off. Area is pi r squared. Half of 16 is 8. 8 squared is 64, so 64 pi centimeters squared is the area in terms of pi. 64 pi is going to be 201. 
0.06 centimeters squared. And now we've just calculated the radius, uh, the diameter, the circumference, and the area. All right, let's finish off the lesson. Let's go to the scriptures, God's word. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. Now he's talking to the outcasts of Israel who have gone to captivity in Babylon. So this promise is directly for them, but these promises also hold true to God's character as well. So I believe in my conscience it's very safe to say that even though this promise when it was written is directed towards the outcasts, the, the, those who are in Babylon of Israel, this also reveals God's heart, and so I believe in my conscience that this also holds true for us today. So what does God say? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with what? All of your heart. So here's the question I want to leave you with, and I want you to talk with someone about this. How is that promise like a formula? How is that promise like a formula? That's the lesson, 1.5 formulas in geometry. God bless you, wherever you are today. Blessings God from blessings Praise Yeah.